Hey everybody, welcome back to the Off Studio, where we talk about whatever I want to talk about, because it's my show, and not JC's. Um, <laughs> please excuse the background noise, there are going to be children um, playing outside in this beautiful, beautiful weather, also known as the toasted oven that is now my death and my future catastrophe clearly so now that that's out of the way we are going to now ignore the sensory phenomena and talk about top tens because it's something that i am really bad at doing i'm not like i can rank what i think is what i like but then ranking about pretty much why i think it's so is really difficult so i don't know if you guys are going to be entertained by a person with terrible ti railing about how he's going to like certain things based on his arbitrary standards but hey how are ya we're gonna do it today. So, top 10 videos. Movies. Shh. Sorry, movies. Oh god, I'm already, I'm, as you can tell, I'm already, goodness gracious, losing my mind. So, first one off the list that I got is Meet the Robinsons. It's actually one of the only films, I know it's animated, but it's like one of the only films that actually kind of puts me, like actually can make me cry. And I think a big part of it without putting into too much spoilers if you haven't watched it go definitely watch it um it's about a kid who meets this other kid at a science fair and things get really interesting and because it's animated and because it's sci-fi people got a lot of powers and a lot of tech stuff going on which i think is really cool but there's like an underlying kind of message where you have to like love your family and kind of things like love where you belong find who your tribe is um and then there's like a concept of inevitability i mean these are all you know things that i'm drawing from this film that i really like and then that last little f song by rob thomas that really kicked in and next thing you know i'm like crying in bed going yeah, this song's making me feel things so i gotta put it on the list a song that makes me cry clearly meet the robinsons congratulations next on the list um i don't know if you guys heard of nightcrawler jake what is it yilin hall people keep saying jillin hall but apparently it's yilin hall um He's kind of, that film was interesting. At first, I didn't actually know what to think of it. When I first watched it, I was actually watching it with my friend, the ESTP. And he was like, hey, Nate, he's like, Nate, you gotta watch this. And I'm going, okay. Never really thought I would be into it. And then next thing you know, because a lot of it is about characterization. A lot of it is a, almost like a character study of a person's descent into madness, which I think is very fascinating. Um, there is something very human there's something very human about a person kind of giving up um a portion of their humanity to kind of get something done and to what extent are they willing to one reach their goals but also to what extent they're willing to step on others and to what extent are they willing to bend the realm of morality to fit their this narrative that they have in their brain which i think is wonderful to just watch and unravel it's so like it's so wild to see it happen i think for the first part of the film it's pretty slow paced but then that's kind of what you expect from a lot of things um but i feel like some there's some situations where that's actually acceptable and i definitely thoroughly enjoyed this film for what it was uh next on the list coco i love me another animated film i think a lot of my gigs tend to be animated i don't know if that's particular of my type but i happen to really enjoy a lot of animated films um i like the hidden messages that a lot of children movies like to have and so coco was definitely one of them i wasn't actually expecting anything i walked in completely blind watching this film so for a quick premise, I guess I think I can drop down. Coco is a Disney Pixar, I believe. Uh, it's about a kid, uh, Mexican, I believe, Mexican roots, Mexican mythology about, you know, death and the afterlife. But there's a whole thing about like family love and loyalty and like following what you want and being all like respecting who is, you know, been there before you. It's a lot of that going on, which I feel like maybe I'm pulling a lot of personal experiences with this, which is probably why I like it. But again, Ta-da! Coco. Next uh, is actually very close to Coco. Book of Life is the next one. And Book of Life is also animated. I believe it's also a Disney Pixar. And I also really liked it. Not because of the Mexican mythology, but also because it has a similar kind of uh, theme about like... I mean, I love color. There's that thing about these two films that I think is something that really puts, puts me out uh, for it. There's a lot of color in these films. Um, the minute... Like, this is almost like your real world is almost very boring in comparison the minute you go into the underworld everything the skulls are colored the clothes are colored like the and as in like technicolor rainbow 
vomit, like everything. And <laughs> sometimes you don't even know what to make of it. But I think in that sea of chaos of all this ink that these animators must have had a field day trying to create this whole entire uh, world is pre it's visually very appealing. And I think that's a big part of me is why I really enjoyed that film is a lot of it is visually appealing and it's such eye candy. Um, especially for someone like me who's into chaos and like is into watching a lot of chaotic things going on at once. That definitely, those two films really kicked in. So Coco, Book of Life. Uh, next one, Lego Movie, another animated film. So the Lego Movie was actually kind of, I would say, quite funny to me because I think I related too much to Emmett. So Permis is a lowly construction worker who is of, made of Lego, uh, believes that he's nothing and then realizes he has a lot more in store for him or the Lego universe has a lot more in store for him um, where creativity meets I guess the mundane and proving yourself even if you believe you are worth nothing. I think that there's a really good message in there. Um, I happen again it's a lot of color really enjoyed that it's a lot of pop culture references which I'm also pretty cool on cool with as well uh, a lot of big shot stars and you know celebrities who lent their voices for it so generally it's pretty good pretty good I ain't complaining but yeah oh, there's that signature song everything is awesome which I feel like is very type 7 and also very me um, I think I've said it many many times one sang the song but also have had this philosophy for quite some time so there you go next is not an animated film it's uh, Freedom Writers so then this next film Freedom Rita's premise is a, a nice white lady decides to help out a bunch of troubled teenagers of from different walks of life different um like different diverse group of teenagers of her class to try to give them another second chance and apparently it's very well one it is historically based so there is there is a person well the main character Hilary Swank actually plays as a real person in real life um, who did try to help um, the youth be able to pursue when opportunities kind of are in their way or their opportunities are too far to grasp and like the main character herself also struggles with that as well which I think is really interesting um, it's a it's a such it's a stark contrast from the other animated films I had listed out prior to this and I think it's because it represents a lot of uh, the character study the character issues that I personally really like when I watch a film sometimes I really like to see everybody kind of fleshed out and struggling um, it gives a sense of intrigue at least for me that's how it is so therefore Freedom Riders is definitely up there uh, another big part of the premise is they have to journal a lot of their struggles so it's a lot of uh, a lot of the actress or the main character reading a lot of these people's journals which if I were an English teacher I realized that that might be a thing that I have to do and that sounds like a lot of work I don't know if I'm keen on reading too much but we'll see if I will eventually like it but she had some she had a good crew like her her class is pretty I would say pretty cool when it comes to expressing your feelings on on paper uh, some did struggle but gotta give it respect when it's due it's pretty good um, and I definitely enjoyed it for what it was. Um, I think the next one's back to an animated film. Uh, Spirited Away actually is up there, has to be up there, or pretty much Spirited Away in pretty much any kind of Hayao Miyazaki film. Um, there is a video I watched on YouTube which kind of highlighted what makes this what makes this film so successful, where they talk about pause, There's some kind of like temporal pause in every scene or in certain scenes where. Uh, Hayao would allow a s part of the film of just lo nothing but looking at the daily life. Like it's like a snapshot of or a slice of life of whatever is going on. So in Spirited Away there's situations where Chihiro, um, in this case, what's her name again? I forgot. Um, Sen. There we go. But Sen is walking around the factory that she's working at. Um, there's like a lot of scenes that involves her actually making the trek and the minutes are being spent of just watching us the audience watching this character kind of walk through to get us a big sense of what the how big the location is how far every location is from one another and it's very he doesn't like uh it's funny because it's almost not like it's not necessarily spoon feeding us but it's very allowing us to really take in the world that he has created which i think is pretty good storytelling uh and so a lot of the is up there so a lot of Hayao's films are definitely up there. Um, a next film uh, is a film that actually came out 
when I was born. It was in the year of 94. It's Shawshank Redemption. Now, Shawshank Redemption is, a start, again, not an animated film. Premise is a guy gets wrongfully accused and is now in prison and he has to figure out a way to either survive and get out, or get out if he can. Um, deals with uh, corruption, dealing with, uh, I guess, intrigue and characters and all that delicious stuff. That film, I would say, was... I don't know if I want to use the word iconic, but I definitely really appreciated the storyline. Um, it has me hooked. I don't know what it is. I keep thinking, every time I look back at it, I'm like, I wouldn't mind watching it again. It's actually really fun. It was a fun movie to watch. It was a fun movie to kind of get yourself into. Therefore, Shawshank, give it a shot. I think that the film itself is pretty awesome. Yeah. I mean, it lost a lot of uh, stuff to Pulp Fiction because Pulp Fiction happened to be at the same time, so I guess too bad. But... It, they're both interesting films, they both offer two different things, but for me, I would say I would pick Shawshank more. That's just been my gig. Next one, the Kill Bill series. Now, people are- <laughs> that's funny because my family kind of doesn't approve of this film because it's very violent, but it does, I would say, give Tarantino's kind of goal of uh, the aesthetics of- not just the aesthetics of violence, but the aesthetics of an action film, and really paid attention to that, which I think is really, it's really interesting. And I, like, there are a lot of times where it does, where there are a lot of scenes uh, relate to, or is like paying, paying homage to a lot of different uh, styles of action films, which I think was really cool. I mean, the different characters, the different, like, everything. Plot-wise, it's almost like you didn't really care necessarily of the goal of the bride and what she's trying to do and what she's trying to make happen. But that's okay. Because even if you didn't really care much about it, I, again, visually appealing. My eyes are just locked in. It's just it's great. Um, which brings me to, I believe, my last one, the tenth one. Whether this is number one or number ten, it, at this point, doesn't really matter. But if you guys ever heard of the Wes Anderson film, Fantastic Mr. Fox, that is another one of my favorite films. Um, again, with the whole family-oriented kind of gig, it's again trying to find yourself, trying to push yourself at being either a mischievous little fox character, um, trying to fight for what's right, or, you know, just trying to prove the... try to save yourself and save your skin the best way you can as long as you're trying to survive. Again, there's a lot of different themes you can take out of it. And for that particular reason, I really like that film. <laughs> it's also a lot of comedic timings and jokes that I really appreciate. Um, it wasn't, I don't think there was a lot of hype around it. That, but then again, I could be living under a rock, so I don't know. But that being said, Fantastic Mr. Fox is definitely up there. So I'm definitely looking very intrigued by it. Without, and with that being said, I mean, that's my top 10. I hope, glad you guys survived, what is it, 13 minutes of me babbling about a top 10. Uh, and I finally actually got to do it, so there we go. Well, with that being said, I mean, stay tuned to for more episodes. We got a lot of stuff coming in down the pipe in the actual studio. Um, yeah, JC and I are kind of we. I don't know if we would call it working nonstop, but we have been really eager to like bring a lot of shenanigans into the room, and the room being the metaphorical ex comparison of the YouTube. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever get rid of my metaphor laced language. I am just covered in it. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Uh, stay tuned again for the next fun. And what are your top 10 films? Let me know. List it out. Give me your reasons. Put it in the comments below. I will eventually read it somehow, some way, maybe not. But I'll eventually will. So you'll have that comforting thought. But yeah, enjoy and thanks again for watching. Bye!